Hello, how are you all? I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Okay, this one is a little bit personal for me. It's personal because I'm talking about Denver, Colorado, and I, Denver has a special place in my heart. I lived in Denver, Colorado for about five years of my life in my early 20s. I actually worked for the city of Denver, Colorado, so I worked for the government in Denver, Colorado, which makes it even more personal. And I just, this was just a very special time in my life. My heart, I have a piece of my heart in Denver. I never saw myself there full term just because I'm a, I'm a kind of a beach gal, I'm a coastal gal but the city was incredible. I had the, the best of friends, the best of times, the best of adventures, and it was just an absolutely amazing city when I lived there. That being said, I did start to see some problems that were arising, not with the structure of the city, but, but more so since I worked for the city of Denver, more so with the city of Denver and how certain policies with what I, what I was doing, it hindered me. I actually quit the field that I was working for when I worked for the city of Denver. I was a youth counselor. I worked for abused and neglected children. I was hit on the head with a boom box uh, by one of my clients and had to go to the hospital and had to be on workers comp for a little bit. And I just didn't feel like my place had my, anyway, long story short, I, I I don't work for that field anymore for a lot of different reasons and a lot of it was due to certain policies that were in Denver. Anywho, I digress. I can make a whole other video about that. That's not what this video is about. What this video is about is what's going on in Denver right now. And what I would like to say to you before we get into this video is while I was working for the city of Denver, um, I had to frequent Denver Health a lot. That's the, the main like public hospital in Denver. Either I had to take my kids there or when I got hurt at work, I had to go there because I worked for the city, workers, all that. So I had been at Denver Health for a long time. Now, I remember being in Denver Health the, the hospital, the, like the main public hospital in Denver. And I remembered how awful it was, how horrible the waiting room was, how crowded it was, how just, it was, in, in my opinion, one of the worst hospitals I've ever experienced in my life. And unfortunately, this is the hospital that if you're lower income, if you're on social services, this is where you're more likely to go. Or if you don't have insurance, this is where you're more likely to go. So um, ever since I've been covering this migrant crisis for the past three and a half years, one thing has always been on my mind. And by the way, the fact that I used, I used to work for the state of Virginia and then I worked for the city of um, Denver, Colorado, I, that has shaped a lot of my opinions about illegal immigration because I worked for a state government. I worked for a city government. So I saw a lot of things firsthand that maybe other people don't see or they're able to not see because they're not directly involved in it. And um, this hospital, the conditions at this hospital were always front of mind for some crazy reason. Ever since I had been covering this migrant crisis when Joe Biden took office, this hospital, the Denver Health Hospital, has been front of mind because I just remember the conditions. And I remember there were, at that time, a lot of illegal immigrants coming into that hospital. Well, fast forward to 2024. I'm, I'm going on looking at you know, the news for the day, I go on the Daily Mail. Denver Health is on the front page. Denver Health on the front page talking about the migrant crisis and how they're going into debt. So we're going to get into that. And I'm going to read you that story. And then we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive within Denver and what's going on there. Because this is, this is what's going on in a lot of our cities across the country. And again, it breaks my heart a little bit more because I love Denver and I know how much potential this city has. Unfortunately, they are plagued by bad policy, just like many cities across the country, okay? So we're going to go back to the hospital and, and what's going on in Denver in just a second. But I wanted to tell you something else before we get started. 
okay? A few days ago, a few days ago, a girlfriend of mine, like a friend that I had when I was living in Denver, she randomly emailed me. I hadn't talked to her. We were really good friends when I lived in Denver. We did a lot of fun stuff together, but we just kind of, we hadn't spoken a lot within the past, you know, and it wasn't anything crazy. We're just both busy. So we hadn't really spoken in a few years. She emailed me out of the blue. By the way, this is someone who is just super positive, like super active. It takes a lot for her to, she's always looking at the bright side. So for her to say, this is bad, it's bad. Anywho, she emailed me and she said, Sarah, and it, she might have emailed me because she sees what I talk about online. And she said, Sarah, since you left Denver, the city has taken a 180. And she sent me a few videos of these homeless encampments that are in Denver currently. And uh, she just said, it's so bad. Like families with kids are moving out of downtown. We don't go downtown anymore. Nobody even takes the light rail. The light rail is like sort of like the metro like system, public transit system, which used to be super safe. It was filled with like young people like families that's who would take it and you could go all over town it would take you to the football field baseball field the nuggets games like anywhere you wanted to go and it was so safe um but she goes yeah you can't even people are using drugs there's homeless everywhere it's so dangerous and i we, we were emailing back and forth anywho yeah, it, it, that caused me to want to do a little bit of, more of a deep dive into Denver. And then when I did that, I was shocked at what I found. So I'm going to tell you what I found. Uh, but also, while I'm doing this deep dive, while I'm trying to put this video together to make for you all, this story popped up literally today on the Daily Mail. So let's just look at this story right now. Denver Health. Okay. So this is Denver Health. This is one of the public hospitals in Denver. And by the way, when you have people coming over our border illegally, they don't have health insurance. They don't have the things that we have. So they're going to need medical support, but they're not going to be able to pay for it. So that's going to be on the hospital's dime. That's going to be on the taxpayer's dime. All right. So here, here's the headline. New immigrants pose a difficult dilemma as Denver Health sees thousands of unpaid medical visits. Denver Health, the city's safety net, which it is. Why? Because it's funded by the state. It's a state-run hospital. So, you know, we live in a welfare state, which is the United States of America. So, you know, if you don't have health insurance, they still have to see you. But who's going to pay for that if you can't pay for it? The hospital. Denver Health, the city's, the city's hospital safety net, saw $10 million in additional uncompensated care in the last year, which the health system largely attributed to the tens of thousands of medical visits from immigrant patients from South and Central America. The rise in cost coincides and health officials attribute to the unprecedented number of immigrants who have crossed America's border illegally and arrived in Denver. Overall, these patients don't have medical insurance, said Dr. Taylor McCormick, Associate Director of Pediatrics Emergency Medicine at Denver Health. Denver Health is eating the cost for many of these visits. Unaccompanied uh, I'm sorry, uncompensated care includes health services that are provided but not reimbursed, often because patients lack medical insurance and the ability to afford the cost of care. Denver Health does not track, nor does it ask, the immigration status of its patients. Why? Because, because Denver is a sanctuary city, so it doesn't do that. Therefore, it loses money. I read another article earlier today. It was in the Daily Mail. If I find it, I'll post it up right up here for you. 8,000 migrants who came over the border within the past few years took up to 20,000 hospital visits. 
And some of these hospital visits also included childbirth. Now, when someone comes over our border illegally and they give birth within the U.S., they are now, that child is now officially a U.S. citizen, just so you know. Uh, this group of patients were identified as new to Denver Health as those without medical insurance and from the following countries, Colombia, El Salvador, Ecuador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, and Venezuela. Lion's share are from Venezuela, a country in which more than 7 million people have fled the brutal regime. It's not just adults. Denver Health is also experiencing record patient volumes among those younger than 18 with a 10 to 15% increase in demand in pediatric care. While, Denver, while the Denver Department of Public Health and Environment performs the bulk of the city's duties, Denver Health operates as the safety net hospital, consequently is partially funded by Denver taxpayers. Yes, this is the public hospital. This is why all the people without insurance go there because they will be able to be seen and then it's on the taxpayer's dime. So you see what's happening to our hospitals. They're suffering. So not only are these hospitals suffering, um, and another article I read that they actually had to turn patients away. They have too many patients coming in. So this is, this is where the homeless that are in Denver go. This is where the low income people or the people that are on social services go. And this is actually where I, as an employee with workers comp, I had to go there. And this is where I had to take my kids that were in our care under Denver Human Services, this is where I had to take them, Denver Health. So this affects the most vulnerable population of people and their ability to get care. So let's go into Denver a little bit more. What is happening in Denver? Well, Denver has had a homeless problem for some time now. And in 2005, the mayor of Denver decided that we're going to do a new initiative. This initiative is going to be 10 years to end homelessness. So it started in 2005. Millions of dollars were spent on this initiative, and it was going to be 10 years to stop homelessness. So we started in 2005, 2015. What happened? Did homelessness end? No, actually, in that year, that year is the year that I moved out of Denver and it actually got worse. It got worse after I left. So we had this 10 year initiative. We put millions of dollars in it. And guess what? It got worse. Not only did it get worse, but Denver decided in 2017, after this homeless crisis was not fixed, when in fact, it was getting worse. They decided, you know what, despite that, despite the fact that we can't even take care of American homeless citizens that are living in, in our city, you know what we're going to do? We're going to call ourselves a sanctuary city. So in 2017, Denver Mayor Michael Hancock signed a bill into law codifying the city's residents to work. So there you have it. They chose to not work with Donald Trump. They chose to do the opposite of what he was doing and they chose to make themselves a sanctuary city. And essentially what that means is that you, you do not work with federal government. You do not work with ICE. You protect anyone that is technically supposed to be deported. So that's what that means. And that happened in 2017 after they did not solve their homeless issue. At that time, the mayor said his intent was to let Denver's refugee and immigrant communities know we've got your back. Well, guess what? You told them, they heard, and now you're a destination for everyone that's coming over our borders in this unprecedented border crisis. All right, so let's fast forward to today. So let's look at what's happening today, all right? So first, let's go to all of these news stories came out within the past month, all of them, okay? So we have had unprecedented numbers coming over our borders, right, within the past few years. And one of the main destinations is Denver, Colorado, because it is a sanctuary city. And what you saw happening is twofold. So one, you had Governor Greg Abbott in Texas, who was like, we can't 
we can't handle all of these people. So we're going to have to start busing them to sanctuary cities. So you do um, have people being bused due to that issue. But you also have people coming over the border who are pretty educated in politics amount amongst the U- the United States. They know which cities are sanctuary. So they will actually request to go to the cities that they know are sanctuary. Uh, So not only do you have these governors suggesting, hey, these cities are sanctuary, maybe you want to go there. Uh, You also have people that are requesting to go to these cities because they know that they're sanctuary. And a few of the main cities that people are requesting are Denver, Chicago, New York. Those are three of the main cities because they are self-declared sanctuary cities. That's why. All right, now here is uh, somebody who just came over the border who is staying right now in Denver. Let's look at this. A mis hijos. ¿Y usted está haciendo esto para ellos? Sí. But in the midst of all the obstacles, he's taking a moment to express his gratitude. No, pues muy agradecido con, con esta ciudad. Y contento de estar acá, lo único que quiero es trabajar. And it's those hopes and dreams that are keeping him going. Salir adelante y pues conseguir lo que quiero, o sea, una mejor calidad de vida. He tells us he's already accomplished one of them. Logré cumplir el sueño que quería. ¿Y cuál fue ese sueño? Eh, conocer ese país. Okay, so you see what he said. You see what he said, right? He said, I miss my kids. He left his kids behind. He left his family behind. He spent $9,000 of his savings. And he says, I wanted to come here because I had a dream of knowing America and I want to work. While that's admirable, that's not asylum. That is not asylum. And you see, he's in a, he's on the taxpayer dime. He's living on the taxpayer dime and he's getting ready to go to Atlanta on a free bus ticket on the taxpayer dime if where he was was so dangerous and so awful why did he leave his family behind he's not even working here he's homeless and cold in denver and he's getting taxpayer shelter you want to know what else is going on in denver right now these i'm going to show you this video this is a homeless american i want you to hear what he's saying he's in denver right now probably blocks from where this guy is. I'll stick together and try to work as one and stay out of the cold weather. It's, it's hard to see people lose limbs out here. All they want to do is be treated like humans, give them an opportunity. As people like Paul Schmidt offer up warmth and kindness. Take your time. There you go, partner. Through food and coffee. This is day eight in this current cold weather activation. Staff at the St. Francis Center stretch their resources thin to make sure everyone has a place inside during the day. My question is, how does a city who has this big of a homeless issue, who has this big of an addiction issue, who has homeless Americans who are concerned about being, who are are concerned about losing limbs in the cold, because they don't have shelter beds. They don't have anywhere to go. They're worried about losing limbs on the... What city with that amount of problems has any business declaring themselves sanctuary? When you are on a plane, they teach you, you put your oxygen mask on first, and then you put it, even if you have a child, you put your oxygen mask on first and then you give it to your child. What business does a city with these issues have declaring themselves sanctuary? They declared themselves sanctuary in 2017. They had a huge homeless problem in 2017. Why did they do that? Was it to one up Trump? Was it to show Trump? Was it to show the Trumpers? Was it to be virtue signalers? Why would they do that? Because now not only do you have homeless Americans living in Denver, Colorado, you have homeless immigrants, illegal immigrants that just came over our border living in Denver, Colorado. You have Denver Health, which is going into debt and collapsing in Denver, Colorado. So what business do you have 
calling yourself sanctuary. We've had residents reported that they've found people in stairwells doing fentanyl. I have a video of a fire that I had to call out to the person in a tent because it turns out that they're... Ever since. Drug dealers are coming by, drug deals are happening, open drug use, there's needles and human waste everywhere. We've had residents reported that they've found people in stairwells doing fentanyl. I have a video of a fire that I had to call out to the person in a tent because it turns out that their tent was on fire because a propane tank was on fire inside their tent. I feel unsafe in my own home scenario because I can't go outside without a new thing happening. We're right next to a hospital. We thought we were going to be safe living near here. Just recently I was I was walking my dog and made it maybe 40 feet from the building and watched a man brutally beat another man with a crutch. So that was that was pretty terrifying for me. So Reed, Corrine and Connie are all Denver transplants. 30 somethings who could live anywhere because they work remotely, but chose Denver only to second guess their decisions. They don't even want to provide their last names after they say multiple cars inside the garage were broken into. We can no longer safely go outside by ourselves without feeling very concerned for our safety as most of us, myself included, have been followed. Uh, we've been yelled at. Yeah, I lived uh, in Chicago for eight years and I never felt the amount of like fear for my safety as I have felt here since I've served more than 37,000 migrants. Right now, more than 4,400 are in our shelters. The city has to find money though to help support those incoming migrants. It announced plans to cut city agency budgets in order to try to do that. But the mayor of Denver says that money needs to come from the federal government. He's in Washington, D.C. DC asking for that right now and I got to talk with him just a couple of hours ago. Tell us what's happened so far, what you anticipate from this trip and while you're in DC, what you're asking for specifically. You bet. I'm here with a group of mayors from around the country, uh, really focusing on both access to resources for affordable housing. I was just over at the housing and uh, urban development uh, uh, team talking with their leadership around resources for affordable housing for working families across Denver. But also, yes, we are here to focus on uh, the migrant crisis and how we can bring mayors together to really push the Congress and the federal government to take action on what we need, which are federal resources to help migrants that are arriving to Denver and critically expanding work authorization so that migrants that arrive in Denver can get jobs and support themselves, which is what they've asked most urgently to be able to do. So we 